So in the last video, maybe I've uh, maybe I've wet your appetite a little bit on determinants when we talked about cofactor expansion, and so now you're back for more. You want to learn more about determinants. You've come to the right place. In this video, we're going to talk about how you find the determinant of some matrix by row reduction. And then after that, after we do like an example problem on that, we're going to talk about some special properties of determinants, and then using those special properties, we're going to solve some we're going to solve a problem that comes up on almost every quiz or exam in this class. So you're going to want to stick stick with us. Stay tuned for that one. Uh, but yeah, so let's talk about how do you find a determinant of a matrix through row reduction. So consider for a second what's called an upper triangular matrix. So what does that mean? It means that you have a matrix. When we're discussing determinants, they're always going to be square matrices. So an upper triangular square matrix has... Um, zeros below the main diagonal. The main diagonal is the diagonal that goes top left to bottom right. So we could have some matrix like 1, 2, 3, 0, 2, 3, 0, 0, 1, for example. This is an upper triangular matrix because you have zeros below the main diagonal. Um, this doesn't exclude the possibility of having as any, like at least one zero along the main diagonal. But an upper triangular matrix has zeros below the main diagonal. So let's ask ourselves, what's the determinant of this matrix? Well, if we use cofactor expansion, we could say we could cofactor expand along this first column and we would say one times, so we would say the determinant of this matrix is one times the determinant of this minor right here, which is two, three, zero, one. And then you know the determinant of this would just be 2 minus 0, or just 2, right? So this is, right, 2 times 1. So this is 1 times 2 times 1 minus 0, but that goes away. If you notice, this is the property I want to point out. An upper triangular matrix, you can find the determinant just by multiplying along the main diagonal. Okay, super important. We're going to use that to find the determinant through row reduction. So here's our game plan. Okay, here's our game plan for finding the determinant through row reduction. We're going we're gonna to be given some matrix, and it says find the determinant of this matrix. And to do it through row reduction, we want to row reduce to uh, upper triangular form. Right? And then uh, that's one, step one. But as we're doing that, you can say step two. We want to keep track of row swaps and row scalings. And you're like, why is that? The reason is because when you do certain row operations, you're going to change what the determinant of the matrix is. So row equivalent matrices aren't necessarily, they don't necessarily have the same determinant. So let's talk about that for a second. What kinds of row operations change the determinant and how do they change the determinant? So I'll be right back with a list. All right, so real quick, as you're row reducing, you're going to be changing the determinant, maybe. How do you know? Well, if you ever do a row swap, like if you swap rows 1 and rows 2, row, row 1 and row 2 when you're row reducing, that's going to change the determinant by a factor of negative 1. If you scale any row, say you say one of your row operations is row 3 equals row 3 times 2, then the determinant of your resulting matrix will be twice as big as the determinant of your original matrix. And then lastly, row replacements, so something like row 3 equals row 3 plus 2 times row 1, those don't change the determinant at all. So you're to it's totally safe. If you just do a bunch of those, you're not going to change the determinant. You don't have to keep track of anything if you're doing just row replacements. Well, let's do an example where we can see this in action. And I'll show you like the way that I keep track of my work because people do it differently. I think my way is very clear to see um, how the determinant is changing so you don't get confused. All right, so we have a matrix that we want to find the determinant of. So the question is, what is the determinant of uh, this guy? All right, so we're going to solve this not by cofactor expansion, but by row reduction. So remember the game plan. The game plan was... One, row reduce to upper triangular form. And then as you're doing that, keep track of row swaps and scalings because those change the determinant. So let's row reduce to row to upper triangular form. So this determinant is equal to, um, let's see, how do we want to do this? Let's swap row one and row two, right? Because we want to get a one here. This is just row reduction. You guys know how to do this. 
So we're going to swap rows 1 and row 2. So that's going to scale the determinant by negative 1. So the determinant of this guy is equal to negative 1 times the determinant of the row equivalent matrix, where we swap rows 1 and rows 2. 3, 7, negative 1. Okay, now what do we want to do? We want to get a 1 up here, so we're going to scale row 1 by 1 half. So this is, this is an important step. So people often mix this up and they'll say row 1 equals row 1 divided by 2, and then they scale the determinant by one half maybe like they don't they kind of maybe get confused so that's a common mistake the way I think about it is you're kind of factoring out a two from the first row so this determinant is equal to the negative one carries over but now we're gonna like factor out a two from the first row so we see negative two times the determinant one two three zero negative seven negative four three seven negative one Okay, we're getting closer to triangular form, upper triangular form. What's the next step? Let's get rid of this 3 by doing row 3 equals row 3 minus 3 times row 1. And that's going to get us a 0 here. But that's a row replacement, which doesn't change the determinant. So we don't have to do anything out front. So we keep this negative 2 times, and then we do this row operation. Okay, continuing to upper triangular form, we want to get a 0 here, but that gets kind of messy with fractions. So I'm actually going to swap rows 2 and row 3. And if I do that, I have to scale the determinant by negative 1. So this negative 2 turns to a positive 2. We get 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, negative 10, 0, negative 7, 4. And hopefully now you can see that it's easier to get rid of this negative 7. We just do row 3 equals row 3 plus 7 times row 2, which doesn't change the determinant. So we keep this 2 here. And now you can see we have our matrix in upper triangular form. We've kept track of how our determinants changed. And so now we can just apply that, that rule that we derived above, where the determinant of an upper triangular matrix is just the product of the entries along the diagonal. And so the, the full determinant of this guy up here is equal to 2 times the determinant of this matrix, which is just the product of the diagonal, because it's in upper triangular form. 2 times 1 times 1 times negative 74 gets us negative 148. And there you go. That's our answer. All right, now I want to introduce some properties of determinants. So let's let's just let's write them out. So the determinant of the product of two matrices is the determinant of the first matrix times the determinant of the second matrix. And why is this? Um, I don't want to go too in depth, but it's pretty easy to like think about if you think about determinants geometrically. So if you remember in the last video. Uh, the determinant of some matrix is like the scaling factor of any um, area. And so if you do, for if you think of A, B, X as some transformation, you could think of this as first you do B to X and then you do A to whatever output you get. And so first you scale any area by B. The determinant of B is how much you scale the area first. And then you scale the area again by A. And so it's kind of like this full transformation AB times X first scales area by this much and then scales it by this much. So you can just multiply the scaling factors to get the total scaling factor. Um, so that's hopefully just a little intuition for why this makes sense. Another uh, property determinant of A inverse. And yeah, we haven't really talked about inverse matrices yet, but uh, maybe you're watching these videos out of order, but it's okay. The determinant of A inverse is equal to 1 over the determinant of A, which kind of makes sense. It's like you can bring this negative 1 exponent outside of the parentheses. And uh, this should kind of make sense because it's you, if you think about A inverse as like the, the transformation that undoes the transformation where just A is the standard matrix, then the transformation that has just A as the standard matrix will scale any area by its the determinant of A. But then when you undo that transformation, you're kind of going in reverse, so you're going to scale by 1 over that uh, scaling factor, which was the determinant of A. So the determinant of A inverse is 1 over the determinant of A. So if these explanations don't make sense to you, it's okay, you can just memorize these. Because um, after all, at the end of the day, you just got to pass. Terrible advice. <laughs> I actually take that back, but uh, uh, whatever. And then um, there is one more, I think. Yeah, okay, the last one is the determinant of A transpose is equal to the determinant of A. And I've also haven't told you guys what the transpose is. A transpose just means you flip the rows and columns. 
So I think maybe we'll talk about this later, but um, just put this on the crib sheet in your head. I know you don't get a crib sheet for your exam, but just these three things are really important. And so now I want to um, do an example problem that's always, I've always seen this on quizzes and exams in my semesters as a TA. So basically they'll say you have two matrices, A and B, and it'll say that there's some dimension. They gotta be square, right? Because we only talk about determinants in terms of square matrices. So A and B are some dimensions, let's say three by three. And then it tells you, it'll, it'll tell you the determinant of both of them. So like determinant of A, it'll tell you is equal to two, for example, and the determinant of B is equal to four. And then it'll say, given this, find the determinant of of 2ab inverse okay and so now this you just have to apply these properties up here but there's one trick and it's this two so was there a property where you could pull out a scalar from the determinant no there isn't so let's first break this up as much as we can so we can turn this into the determinant of 2a times the determinant of b inverse, right? I'm applying this property here where you can split it over the product kind of like that. So this is 2a times b inverse. So I just split up the determinant like this. We know the determinant of b inverse is one over the determinant of b according to this property of determinants. And so we can split this up more and say that the determinant that we're asked to find is equal to the determinant of 2a over the determinant of b. And we're almost there. We know the determinant of a and we know the determinant of b, but what, are, what is the determinant of 2a? Is it just 2 times the determinant of a? That's the trap. That's what people always end up messing up. But the, the actual answer to this is we have to use the fact that a is a 3 by 3 matrix. So if you consider some matrix like... Um, say the identity matrix, the three by three identity matrix. The determinant of this equals one. Do you agree? It's upper triangular, so you can just multiply along the diagonal. And uh, now we want to find the determinant of two times this matrix. So what is that? It's the determinant of two times a matrix. You just distribute the two to every single entry. So you get this guy. And what is that? Well, you can think about you just multiply along the main diagonal and you get 2 cubed. But, um, or you could think about it as um, you do three row scalings by 2. Um, and if you remember, each individual row scaling scales the determinant by that scalar factor. And so if you do it three times, you're scaling the determinant by 2 three times. And so the determinant is actually scaled by 8. Um, so th that's just two ways to think about this. So up here, this isn't equal to two times the ratio of the determinants. It's equal to two cubed times the determinant of A over the determinant of B. And that's why they had to give you the dimension of matrices A and B. Okay, so that's just something to look out for. So then we could finish this up. That's eight times the determinant of A was given to be two and the determinant of B was given to be four. So the answer is just four. Okay, this is a very common problem. And uh, this is the step right here that I want you guys to be careful about. You can't just pull out the two in front of the determinant. You have to think about it in terms of how many row scalings am I doing. Okay, cool. So in the next video, I think we're going to do maybe inverses or the invertible matrix theorem, which is a huge concept. And it's like 80% of what I studied when I took this class was the invertible matrix theorem because it's like the climax of linear algebra. You'll see it. You'll see it.